Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Army of the Dead. Survivors take all. Written and directed by Zack Snyder, starring Dave Bautista, Ella Purnell, Ana de la Reguera, Theo Rossi, and Omari Hardwick. I'd like to list all the people because they did a great job, but we'll go to the synopsis. This movie's basically Ocean's Eleven meets Dawn of the Dead. A group of people that are good at what they do, their mission is to get $200 million from a Las Vegas safe, which seems simple enough to me. However, Vegas is quarantined and there's a bunch of zombies in there, so they need to fight their way to get to the money and then get to the helipad and get out before a nuclear bomb blows them all to smithereens. It sounds exactly like a video game and that's how the movie plays out. So what do we like? I actually love this story. To have this set up almost like Ocean's Eleven, like the whole buildup of let's get Dave Bautista who is Scott Ward, he's your Clooney, and then you go forth, you get your Pitt, you get your Damon, you get your Bernie Mac. It's just really funny seeing like them play it out and even like make the reference to like, it's as simple as just like walking off into the sunset, just like the same way Ocean's Eleven and it's riddled with zombies like what more could you ask for the story was excellent and the characters that helped move it along were so good like all of the acting is phenomenal I'd love to sit there and talk about every single character but just like a generalization is they are just all great and they build up such great stories and little relationships between them I think one of the more notable ones is between Dieter and Vandero the guy with the dope-ass buzzsaw that's like a really minor relationship that is built so well. One guy's a super nerd, that's Dieter. He's the safe guy. And then Vandero is just like some badass who becomes kind of like a bigger brother to him. And a lot of other characters throughout the movie have relationships that are built up like that throughout. It puts value in some of the zombie confrontations so you actually care. It's like, oh shit, I know that that person cares about that person and so you give a shit. They build up a character in an opening credit scene and kill them off and I felt sympathy for that person. So you can imagine what a two hour film's gonna be like when you have like full on conversations and like explored situations. And I was devastated when certain characters died and I was happy when other ones finally got that satisfying kill. So touching on the opening segment, you immediately know that this is like a super high budget movie and the cinematography and the way that the story is told is phenomenal. Literally, every situation looks beautiful. Sometimes maybe there's too much depth of field, if I'm being honest, but there's the right use of slow motion and long takes and even just like wide shots to show kind of the landscape so that the audience understands what exactly is happening without checking your mini map. This is honestly like a video game. Even when Scorpion is giving them the mission at the beginning, <laughs> love Sonata, holla, it almost plays out. Like it shows you like the intro cinematic of what they're supposed to do. It's just a movie that like I walk out and look at like I have a big stupid grin on my face because I enjoyed myself through and through because of the way that it was presented. He's like, when he did the remake of Dawn of the Dead, he knocked it out of the park. And you can tell that he's taken those elements from traditional valued zombie movies and brought it into his film here. Just how the landscape, the way you build the characters, how they interact, and of course, the zombies themselves. The zombies had an amazing look and a unique aspect that you have to reinvent the zombie game sometimes. And I think Snyder did a great job with his zombies. Absolutely, especially having different tiers to the zombies. There's like the low level brainless dudes that we're used to. Then there's the super fast intelligent zombies that even have an emotional aspect to them because we have a king and queen zombie, which is completely new. I mean, I'm sure we've seen it in other movies, but like it was a primary focus in this one. And we got Siegfried's friggin' tiger zombie. Come on. <laughs> Move over, zombies. There's a new animal zombie in town. Arguably, the zombies front cover or whatever looked the same as this one. I'm just saying. <laughs> Asylum, give me a zombies three. Although we do need to watch Aquarium of the Dead still. Not spoiling any of the kills, but when you see a character or a zombie die, it looks great. And it's not too much because they do have their off screen moments, but when you get a kill, you appreciate. It. And a complete aside, shout out to Peters being the most badass bitch. <laughs> She's exactly what I would do. If somebody walked up to me and was like, here's $10,000. 100% I'm in, yeah. 
You don't want to know, you know, the risks or... Why would I want to know the risks? Uh, no questions asked, let's go. Uh, no pegging, maybe. Now, what didn't we like? I felt that this movie didn't need to be two and a half hours. I, it's not like I was bored, but you definitely tell they hung on a few moments a little too long. They probably could have trimmed up about 15 minutes. Although we were gonna watch this anyway. So it didn't play into us even turning it on. But it was a shock when we were like, all right, let's sit down and watch a movie. It's like, oh fuck, it's two and a half hours. Well, strap in. Wait for the Snyder Cut. And I guess that's probably why. It's like, if we don't release a Snyder Cut, then they're just gonna ask for it for years anyway. We may as well do it now. Although, you could have sold some more Netflix subscriptions if you just held out. Boy, did we have a full awesome hour of tiger killing for you. Carol Basket. Not necessarily a gripe for me, but I think that people could complain about it is the CGI blood because most of the blood in this movie is CG. There's not a lot of practical gore and that's expected in this kind of movie because there's so many moving parts Parts. The way that the blood is done in this is very reminiscent of like a Mortal Kombat movie where it's like almost too over the top but still looks kind of cool. And I know that people will have issue with that. And you know, 10 years ago, I would have. Things have changed, I guess. There were some dumbass situations where people could have saved their friends and they just opted not to, which pissed me off. Well, in certain circumstances, it drives more character development. You're like, okay, now we understand how that person's gonna act in the future. But there's other situations, minor spoiler, I guess. There's a girl who gets blown up by a gas tank. Five people had the opportunity to save her and they just didn't. And she didn't say, hey, this person fucked me over, watch your back. So like. Like, it's little things like that where it's like, what? You need to start snitching. There are like plot points that you could sit there and argue about being like, why would he bring this character? Why would he leave that character alone? Obviously we're gonna complain about that kind of stuff because like it irritates you. It's There's nothing you could do about it. And there's like dumb plot points, especially like for me, I even said to Jay, I said, they're gonna drop a nuke on Vegas. Just go in the safe, do the full Indiana Jones in the fridge and you'll be fine. That's just like movie logic. It has happens in every movie. It's important to point out. It's not important to point out. It's just what we do here. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. I really enjoyed myself. It was longer than expected, but it was awesome the whole way through. Every character I cared about, whether I liked them or I hated them, or I just wanted to see how their relationships would build with some of the other people in their group. You can sense the friction, you can sense the love. There's a lot going on, and not only in our main characters, but the zombies too. I thought the zombies looked great. I love that there were multiple types, and I just like the progression of the film itself. Like I said, this feels like a video game, and as a gamer, I want to play this video game. So of course I'm gonna like watching this movie. Arguably, there weren't as many zombie fights as you might expect from this kind of movie, but at the same time, if you go back and watch some of your favorite zombie movies, there also aren't as many zombie fights as you think there are when looking back. The cinematography was insane, and I wanna see more of this universe. So I'm gonna give this four idle hands out of five. Like Jay, I had an absolute blast watching this movie. And it's not just because Dave Bautista is the main character. Like the whole cast, just killed it. I appreciated every character in this film. It was a great story and there isn't a lot of negatives I can talk about this film. I thoroughly enjoyed it from beginning to end. I know that it's a saturated market, but when done right, you really can appreciate it. And I think they hit the zombie on the head with this one. So with that being said, I give this film four and a half Phantoms of the Paradise out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do want to check it out, Links are in the description, but it's Netflix, so that's where you go. But if you want to see, maybe not the, a better version of Army of the Dead, but another version of Army of the Dead that came in 2008, check out the link in the description, the card over there. Oh, you're going for a wild ride with that one. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date with everything, Bloodbath and beyond.